This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Yes, science is likable. <laughs> science is the finest of humanity. Science is up here. <laughs> Politics down there. Right. You know, science uh, uh, rises up exactly. and elevates us. Right. Politics, mm, it spoils, it, it des right. despoils us. Like, you know? like Oscar Wilde said, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, that, that, by the way, is Ethan Allen. He's the host of Likeable Science, and I just hang around on Fridays with him once in a while, and we cover interesting things. And we're talking about new technology for 2018, which is actually new science and technology for 2018. And the first thing about the stars you mentioned, Ethan, is the neutron stars. What's going on? There's a lot happening in astronomy, isn't there? Right, so last year it was actually given by the American Association for the Advancement of Science. It was given the breakthrough of the year was the, uh, the observations of two neutron stars that were got close enough to one another that they began to spiral together and eventually collapse together. What's a neutron star? So a neutron star is basically a sort of sun-sized star that has, it's at the end of its life, it's burned itself out basically, and it collapses down to a, a little ball probably only a few miles across instead of the 143 million miles, whatever the Very dense. Is. Yeah, very dense spewing out lots of odd radiation. And when two of them get together, as they get closer and closer, they begin, of course, irradiating one another, pulling on each other. All sorts of interesting stuff starts happening, emissions of various sorts, types, and varieties. And it had all been theoretical before. The astronomers and cosmologists had figured out what this ought to look like. And they actually saw it happening. And they had literally thousands of observatories around the world trained in on this event in the, in the minutes to days to weeks to months following it. And so many of their predictions came true. These guys had actually been right. They had figured out what really would happen. There were a few surprises, but, but a lot of stuff. It was great. A whole like, new world. Yeah. A whole yeah. new world for astronomy. Yeah. Huge data, data banks now yeah. filled with information. Yeah. Time for a short rant. <clears throat> There's more happening in astronomy than ever before. It's increasing, not only in the, in the power and the flow and the, the vision of its science, um, you know, but in its appreciation of the universe, the result of trying to find you know, the role of humankind in the larger firmament, it's quite something. And, um, and, and the world, the scientific world, we know this because they came here about a year ago with the uh, astronomy uh, uh, conference at, mm -hmm. at, the, uh, at, the, uh, oh, yeah. at the convention right. center. That They come from everywhere and they're so excited from every country. It's like, it's a great common denominator for all of science to look at, at the science of the stars. Sure. And, and the one thing that is so sad, may I say so sad, is that Hawaii it used to have a reputation globally for being a center of astronomy, a center of the science of the stars. Now has a reputation with two black eyes over the thing at, uh, at Mauna Kea. And if I could talk to a minute, you know, those guys who are out there complaining, still now today, it's in court, everybody's arguing about it, they don't want it, they oppose it in every which way. It's so important to them to oppose it. They're wrecking our reputation as a center of astronomy for the world. Well, furthermore, they're, they're essentially limiting options for young Hawaiian students to get inspired about science on a local level, to see the great science that can happen around here, and to get involved in it. It's, it, the, yeah. They're, enormous it's, destructive yeah, power, yeah. destroying possibilities and opportunities yeah, yeah, for Hawaii. Yeah. And yet, you know, I went to the Big Island about a year ago, and I, I met with um, Calabash fam, Calabash family over there, and uh, there were like hundreds of people in this big gathering. And I asked them systematically, what do you think about TMT? Every one of them loved it. Yeah. Every one of them wanted it. So what's going on here? Yeah. Can we manage the minorities in, in, our, in our political spectrum? I, I used to joke about this in Seattle. They would hold a vote, decide to go one way, and then one person would raise their hand and say, oh, no, I don't like that. And they, oops, now we've got to like re-vote about the whole thing. I mean, Power of veto. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it seems that we yeah. get these minority tiny, rules. tiny little minorities. Tiny, tiny minority rules. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's wrecking us as uh, not only in our reputation, but in our prospects going forward. Sure. We're going to lose the edge. We'll never be as great as we might have been mm -hmm. in astronomy, not only for the astronomers, 
but for the kids yeah. and the people yeah. and the reputation and the whole image of Hawaii as a place with some excellence and some value. Of course, at the, at the risk of starting our, our discussion on the wrong path, the, the same could be said sort of nationally about the U.S. And well, let's take another. <laughs> how about a rant for you? Go ahead. You know, this administration and science, what do you think? No, this administration doesn't, doesn't believe in science. They basically have, have said that a, a number of times, a number of places. They think climate change is a Chinese hoax. When, when it's one of the best established, most docu well documented uh, situations happening in the world, uh, you know they they give in to people who want want to limit what science does. They want to cut budgets incredibly severely. Uh, they want to cut the, all the EPA science to, so we can't study our environment and keep make sensible, evidence driven policy choices. You know. <laughs> No, don't, don't it's get a failure of the schools, and it's a failure of those yeah. who claim to be educated. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. How can you be educated and not understand right. science? Not give some validity to science? Right. Yeah. You know, you knock it off. Just don't, don't care about science. Yeah. But, you know, reject science. <laughs> reject rationality and enlightenment. They'll get you somewhere. Yeah. And if you reject science, you are rejecting rationality yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Not only science, but all rationality. Right. Right. That's what we got in Washington. <laughs> Yeah, it's disgusting. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> okay, the thing on Think Tech is we can speak freely about yeah. this. Uh, CRISPR, yeah. which is a fabulous new technology, biotechnology, call it, and it has been moving faster, but perhaps with more wrinkles than before. Talk to us about that, Ethan. Well, yeah, the interesting thing to keep in mind about CRISPR, what we think of it as a new technology, it's really a very old technology. CRISPR and Cas9, the, pro the protein that's involved in this, is basically it's a system that bacteria developed eons and eons ago to fight off viral infections. You know, and we didn't invent this stuff. The bacteria figured it out or natural selection. Smart bacteria. Uh, selected it a long time ago. Um, because it's bacterial based, right, there have been some wrinkles because once they've started trying this in people now, what they find is that some people are basically have antibodies already to these bacterial enzymes that are that lie at the heart of this little gene. Uh, scissors, as it were, scissors paster, as it were, uh, and then it won't work for them. But people, some people got really freaked when this first came out, when the reports came out that there were people who were had essentially antibodies against it. But they point out, uh, one, it's probably very widespread in bacteria. We've been using pretty much off of one strain of bacteria that pretty commonly infects people, so it's not really a surprise that people might be protected against that, as it were. So the thing is to do is to pull up some bacteria out off of a hydrothermal vent. These bacteria we will have never seen before, right? They won't have interacted with people. Grab their CRISPR system, basically, and we won't, nobody, nobody will be immune to it. Yeah, you know, so, so that would yeah. solve the problem. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It's just so. a matter of opening your mind a little bit and seeing something outside right. the box. Good for them. Yeah. Figuring this out. So, what can CRISPR do for us going forward? Assuming we can, you know, sort of make it ubiquitous. Oh, I, I mean, its its potential is enormous, virtually virtually endless, because it can go in, find certain problems with certain cells, snip out bad parts, either sew the ends together or insert correct parts back in, sew everything back up very neatly, and and send it on its merry way. So if you spot, uh, if you use it particularly prenatally or very early in development, you spot there's a defective gene, you send CRISPR into when your little uh, uh, blastocyst of 16 cells or whatever, brrr, runs and fixes all 16 cells and you're as good as new, basically, you know? I mean, mm. it has tremendous, tremendous options. Ethical, ethical issues on that? Well, as with all science and all technology, I mean, how it gets used is, dependent upon who is using it and what their motives are. So, right, I mean, if we're using it to cure diseases, that, that's all the good. If you're using it to try to create a race of super beings, that, that's bad, you know? If you're, yeah. if you're using it to make a, uh, an infection again, that only targets certain groups or types of people, that's even worse. Worse, you know? yeah. You know, yeah. So. Well, you know, there was this thing about primates. Did you see that? Primates now are being cloned. Yes, yes, I they right. clone a monkey. Right. Cute, cute monkey, really, really <laughs> cute. And, and so if they can clone a monkey, how far are they away from, you know, you know, I wouldn't have to come and host the show. You wouldn't have to come and be involved in the show. We could both be at home. We could have our clones doing it for us. What, a, what efficiency that is. Eh? Well, it's a little difference. You know? I mean, if, if they cloned you now, 
your clone would grow up, and therefore your clone would not be you, because your clone would live in a very different world than you grew up in, would have very different experiences, <laughs> right? They might genetically be identical to you, but, but they would not be experientially like you. You know, the, th the thing with CRISPR is that it's actually more powerful than cloning, because in cloning you have to wait, the natural right. gestation period and all that stuff. Uh, but in, in CRISPR, you know, I, I think that it's not often said, but CRISPR can operate, can work and do those magic things almost immediately. It's like Star Trek, it happens right away, right? It, 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 yeah, it can do things very rapidly, depending on how you set it up, it can do things very widely in your body. Uh, yeah, it, it has, again, it's, it's just, I mean, it's, it's not even the Model T yet. I mean, it's a very crude system yeah. as of yet, and, and it's still already just, just waking people up and, yeah, and, yeah. and to realize that the whole field of medicine is, is going to be changing here. Changing right. the genetic makeup, right. changing the DNA yeah. while you watch. It really is out of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. A magic wand. And, oh, the coming, we should all stay alive long enough to take advantage of it. Yeah, it's yeah. a great piece of science. It's interesting, all of this in our lifetimes, but accelerating, oh, yeah. happening faster. Yeah. And yet the government seems to be treating it as happening slower or resisting it. I mean, these things could make, you know, the human experience so much more rich, more, oh, I don't know, more enlightened, more, more fabulous than mm -hmm. it has ever been. It could make you religious, yeah. actually. <laughs> Science making religion. There it is. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about dentistry. That's okay. another one that came up. Sure. So uh, again, there's just astounding stuff happening with dentistry. People are now looking at ways to be able to literally have you grow teeth anew, basically, which as, as adults, of course, we cannot regrow teeth. But they are figuring out ways to, to do this. Uh, some a great odd variety of ways of doing it, various uh, drug or chemical treatments. Uh, somebody has a, now a laser treatment that, that somehow stimulates cells to actually start growing again. It won't apparently grow the enamel, but at least it could grow the root and the pulp, and then it would be fairly easy to, to put a cap on that and, yeah, yeah. and uh, make it go. Uh, they're using, their, they, one of the most fascinating ones, they found a drug that has been in wide use. It's all FDA approved. It's actually used for the treatment of Alzheimer's, and it turns out it actually promotes tooth growth. <laughs> So not only can you think more clearly but you and not better. be affected by the ravages of Alzheimer's, <laughs> but, but, your, but your teeth are better, too. Right, right. What a combination of events, eh? There we go, so right. There's the magic panacea right, right now, right here. Right. You know, I don't think people realize how much technological progress has been made in dentistry over the course of our lifetimes. It's amazing. It, it really is. I was just in recently having some dental work done, and it's just it's stunning even in the course of my lifetime to think of how it's changed and how much more sophisticated it's gotten, how much better they do it, how much less pain is involved, uh, how quickly it can be done. I mean, again, it gets into these other technologies. They now, if they have to pull out a tooth, they can, three, they can map that tooth first and then 3D print you a tooth right in the dentist's office and stick in an identical shaped tooth so you have your, your whole bite is all nice and stable. Yeah, uh, I, I just I just was today uh, Friday yeah. was uh, Wednesday. Uh, I had a terrible time with one of my teeth. It like was falling out. I mean, because huh. I'm old. Sorry. And when you get old, you know, you thought you were indestructible when you were 20, and your teeth would always be around. So you go junk food and all this, and uh, and sugary sodas and whatnot. And then after a while, you find out your teeth are not invulnerable. <clears throat> anyway, so one of my teeth was really in trouble, and I went to the dentist. He's lucky he took me. Uh, fabulous dentist, Patrick Hayashi, DDS. He's my dentist, and uh, it was just amazing. He fixed that thing. He completely replaced the top of it. He did all the drilling and the, all the work he had to do, and he had one of those machines that creates the cap, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it just shaves off a piece of material, and presto, you got a cap. And he did this in so short order. He slipped me in between appointments and, you know, and did this in short order. It was like, it was like miracle, wow. miracle, magic. And I mean, it's, it's a lot to do with technology, although you've got to have good technique yes. and good assistance in the office. But I must say, I mean, every time I go to see him, I'm more impressed huh. with the way he sees it as technology and uses the technology yeah, no, no, no. and makes it such an efficient, painless experience for you. Yeah, ditto, ditto for my dentist, Dr. Bonnie Lau. Bless her heart, she's wonderful. She, you know, trying to stay up with the, the the edge stuff that is, uh, yeah, and it's funny because dentistry seems in a lot of ways to have lagged, but it's really now starting to boom. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and wow, it's, it's going to go crazy from here. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. this thing, uh, you know, aside yeah. from having your dementia resolved, uh, grows teeth right. all by itself, right. 
uh, you know, you you will be indestructible. <laughs> All right, yeah. If they start, you know, replacing your teeth as you're losing them, and you know, yeah, uh, yeah. that's fabulous. I, I it's so fabulous. Give me a, you know, it means it makes me want to take a break. So let's take a break. We'll come back and talk about the biggest thing of all uh -huh. right after this break. Okay. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go! 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 Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Okay, so we we don't have dementia anymore. <laughs> That's why we remember this is Ethan Allen over here, right? And he is the host of Likeable Science, and I just visit with him every now and then doing Likeable Science. And we're talking about uh, new technology for 2018, and we talked already about neutron stars. We're talking about CRISPR. We're talking about the new world in dentistry. But now we're talking about the big one, the big one, huge big one, and it's it's going to proliferate and propagate all over our society and our world in every corner it's going to change the human condition what is it artificial intelligence <laughs> or machine learning that's what yeah. it's called yeah. what is that <laughs> well let me, let me just start with a little story here if i might uh just getting at how you can't always think one step ahead right so years ago these scientists were investigating the intelligence of uh, chimpanzees and so they set up a room and hung a bunch of bananas in the, from the ceiling in the center of the room and they put a bunch of big crates around the monkey in theory the chimp could stack up and get up there and they gave up put a long pole in the room that the chimp in theory could hold and knock down and then they bring the chimp on in and put him in the room and the chimp looks at the pole and he looks at the boxes and he takes his research scientist by the hand and walks the guy out in the center of the room, climbs up under his shoulders and grabs the bananas. Oh, okay. And it was just like, yeah, they hadn't thought the one step ahead. This monkey clearly saw the easier way to do this rather than stacking the boxes or swinging his pole around. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. <laughs> right. That's a wonderful story. <laughs> and that's sort of what I think we got to be concerned about with AI, that it's getting to that stage where it may be start outthinking the people who created it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it clearly in some ways already does, in some fields. Software yeah. is only as good as the people who yeah. created it, yeah. and it only does what the people create. But you know, that's, that's the scary thing about AI. Right? It, it goes to another level. Yeah. It becomes, it has its own personality. Maybe it doesn't do exactly what you programmed it to do. They, they, I was just reading about one of the new AI courses in playing Go now and beating grandmasters and all. They now had a, have an AI system for Go that they gave one of the world's very best players, they gave him a, I forget whether it's a two chip or a four chip head to start. I mean, that's, you get to place four blocks, which wow. is huge, wow, huge, huge advantage. Yeah. And the machine still beat him. <laughs> and, and I mean, yeah, you can't, you yeah, sort of can't do that. very interesting, yeah. 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 Well, and you apply that kind of acumen, if you will, to other things, and right. you can do bloody anything. As a matter of fact, I always used to say, um, give me a problem, any problem, uh, any process, and I can find software that will improve it. Mm -hmm. Any process at all. Now it's much more than that. Now give me, oh, I don't know, give me something you can't do, that you mm -hmm. never could do, a process you have not been able to actually do mm -hmm. yet. I'll give you software, I'll give you AI that can go way beyond that. Oh. Can think of the problem, solve the problem, think of the next problem after that, and branch out in every which way. And that's what we got going. One of the things that came up in the last couple of weeks uh, was the story of Amazon Go, oh, yeah. which is the Amazon Store, which uses AI and a, a, a system uh, involving a number of sensors and you know and, and uh, software software processes right. that can identify everything that's going on in a 5,700 foot store. Um, what you're taking off the shelf, what you're putting back on the shelf, and it knows. It knows what you're doing, it knows what's on the shelf, hmm. and it knows you walked out the store and it charges you accordingly. Right. Um, this is really smart. 
And this is, you know, and it's, it's in a little box that big, right? It's just software. Yeah. The point is that uh, between sensors and software and, you know, integrating uh, other kinds of technologies with it, you can have a store now without a cashier. Yeah. Too bad about the labor force, without a cashier. Yeah. In fact, all you have in that store are people who explain to you how the artificial intelligence works. That's that's all it is. <laughs> right, because the, the, the stocking of, from the warehouse to the shelves is all being done by automated you know, self driving robotic. vehicles. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah it's, I mean, more and more people are, are becoming sort of extraneous to, to a lot of the infrastructure. You know. I have to give Bezos credit for that, uh -huh. you know, for thinking up, thinking uh -huh. out of the box for those things. I mean, so. Uh, if it isn't one thing, it's another thing. It's always a step ahead. It's always finding out another another way to make the human experience more mm, easier mm -hmm. and more satisfying, mm -hmm. actually. So you can go into the store and, and, and buy something without checking out. What's next? I mean, you can go to the store and, and it can tell you what you need because <laughs> it keeps an inventory of what you bought last time mm -hmm. and what you seem to need and mm -hmm. what your you know what your profile is. Right. And before you know it, you know, it's delivering all this to you with a drone. Right, Who needs say, the store at all? Right, your refrigerator will, will be telling the store what to, what to send over when, basically. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, so, and all this through the yeah. power of software and yeah. artificial intelligence. Right. And he's leading, leading the yeah. way. Although yeah. they say that they have stores like this already in China, mm -hmm. good for them that they figured it out. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Bezos is the one that, that has, you know, been prominent in the news lately. Right. And I expect um, that there will be much more coming down that pike. Right, but it, it brings us into the, to one of the real big sort of challenges is these AI, AI is only sort of as good as the people who build it, right? And by good, I sort of mean ethical. And there's now a movement afoot to actually start really trying to build ethics in artificial intelligence, build systems that, that have some moral compass basically in them and won't won't put their their own uh, brain power, as it were, to work on bad stuff, you know. But will only sort of work to better humanity. Uh, it's, it's a very, I mean, it's a very interesting area. And, and as AI gets sort of smarter and smarter, it becomes more and more critical that we think about this first, right? Before we get stuff that's too smart, right? Yeah. If it's too smart and ill-intentioned, or, or sort of built by somebody with bad in intent. Uh, well, you the, could have the, bad people using yeah, I mean, it. You, you and I talked about the weaponized miniature drones uh, yeah. a while ago. Yeah, yeah, that was huge. that was an example of artificial intelligence yeah. too. And, a huge and you could decide for... that everybody who fits in a certain category, right. and it could be racial, right. it could be philosophical, yeah. it could be anything, right. and we, we're going to wipe out that part of the population. Yeah. This make makes Hitler look like a piker. <laughs> I mean, you can take any part of the population and destroy it with right. these artificial intelligence right. drones, and some bad guys are going to be thinking right. of how to do that. Right. You know, it's that low politics right. against the enlightenment of science, right. and they use science in order to achieve right. low politics ends. Right. This is very scary. And China is getting into AI now in a very big way. Yeah. And of course, China has a well-deserved historical reputation for doing a little shortcutting on things, cutting quality, uh, lying wow. about ingredients and, and civil products. rights, human rights. Yeah, yeah. And so one has to worry, you know, when when if they get a bunch of AI stuff spitting off into their, their sort of their backwaters and black ops groups, you know, what's going to happen? Well, with AI, with the Amazon Go and other things like that, I mean, we're we're seeing it. We've seen it before. Amazon Go. We've seen the world collecting data, the government collecting data about us, industry collecting data, selling data. I mean, there's no place you can hide. Walden right. Pond is gone. Right. You know, the great outdoors, uh, Pacific Northwest, you know, you can't run and hide. <laughs> you can't do that. So we all live in this, this, this grid of, you know, data collection about everything. And so, I mean, there's a value in doing that in Amazon Go because it knows that you want this kind of milk right. instead of that kind of milk. Right. Um, but, you know, there's other things. And China is experimenting with that, uh, maybe more than experimenting, collecting data about everybody. Um, we had a show two weeks ago, um, uh, 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 a presentation at the China seminar. Richard uh, Hornick came and spoke about mind control in China. Well, you do mind control by collecting data about people to find out what they're thinking. There's lots of ways you can find out what people are thinking. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you hold that against them. You mm -hmm. make a quotient of how faithful and attractive they are to the current political administration. And you reward those who are. And you... Mm -hmm. Punish those who are not, and you do this on the basis of a of a scientific analysis, uh, uh, based on the data they have about you personally. Yeah, I mean we're seeing bits and pieces of that already here. I mean, my wife says it's it's truly disturbing to her when she gets online and 
And her computer comes up and says, we see you've been uh, investigating this, that, or the other thing here. How about, you know, here's some more things. It's chilling. Yeah. I think it's going to see a lot more of that. Oh, yes. I think it's, a, you know, it's a, an accelerating process. Right, right. And it's what's harder more and harder is, to stay away from it. you know, remember at the beginning of this, people said, oh, I'm privacy, privacy right. is very important. And then maybe they said it a little less. They were enticed by it. Other people didn't give a rip about privacy. So the result is that little by little, we migrate to a new normal. And the new normal is, well, they know everything about me. What can I do about it? Mm -hmm. You know, you can know about me. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not all right. Mm -hmm. It's not all right if they're looking at your mind and making quotients about you right. and determining if you get benefits or don't get right. benefits on the basis of what you are thinking. Right. It's coming. Yeah, I mean, this stuff with, you know, people say, you know, having one of these Alexis devices in your house. I mean, that thing is just gathering data all the time. It's listening to what you're saying, and, you know, the sort of you know, what you're, what you may be playing on your music, what you may be watching on television, what, what you may be doing on your computer. And it's taking all that data and feeding it in. And that, that you know, do you want somebody listening in on you day in, day out? Well, I just want to tell you a chilling story, <laughs> just a little story, my own story. Sure. Just last night, 2 o'clock in the morning, the house is silent. You know, my wife and me, we're both sleeping. All of a sudden, Alexa goes off. Really? And she starts t saying something. I don't know what it was. It was, didn't matter. We just she woke us both up. And we didn't give her any reason to wake up. We didn't say, uh, you know, Alexa didn't call her name. There was nothing happening. It was quiet. What's going on? And my wife said to me, it's listening, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, could I... Be, could be that when you mumbled Alexis in your sleep or something, <laughs> and, you know, she came right along. Yeah, I mean, surrounded by gizmos right. that if they don't watch you now, they will right, soon. Right. His big got, brother is watching you. You've got to have that well. next step when Alexis knows you're asleep, unless even if you call out her name, you're really not interested in talking to her. You know. Yeah, you know, so... But again, making nuanced judgments about people and their, yeah. their intent. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. yeah. So, I mean, this, this is the dark side of science, but the fact is I love science, I love computer technology, I love mm -hmm. making things easy, expanding my consciousness, learning things I would never learn. Mm -hmm. Having a browser there, it's like the portal to the world. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, the problem with it, I'll tell you what the problem, ready for the problem, you're sitting down? Sure. The problem, <laughs> the problem is we become dependent mm -hmm. as human beings. Yeah. And if it ever was taken away from us, we'd be in, in a dark place. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> The other problem is, again, the, the, like the, what's the acronym, PICNIC, for problem in chair, not in computer. I mean, so much of our technological problems are really the problems of the user and their intent or their motivation or their desires and not really the technology itself. Uh, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, 2018, here we are. We're sailing in. We're one month in, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, already. See how quick it right goes. Um, it's very exciting. Things are moving more quickly now. What is your advice? What is your advice, Ethan? Take camera one to people and how they integrate these fantastic changes, transcendental changes happening every day at an accelerating rate. How do they handle that? This camera one. Um, camera it, three. <laughs> camera four. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You know, pe people, that's why I think learning science is so, incre so incredibly important, why people have to understand the basics of science. And it's not a set of facts and knowing chemistry and biology and physics. It's a way of thinking about the world. It's a way of asking questions, making observations, weighing the evidence, being aware of your own biases, checking out alternative ideas. I mean, this is really, it's more important than ever that we do all this. You know, how do you know whether or not when you're ready to get a, a self-driving car or when that technology is safe to sort of deal with. You've got to really think about a lot of different things, right? Yeah. And, and you know, when, do you, when do you know what, what technology to bring in your home, yeah. you know, what it's going to do, what it may do to you. Yeah. you know? It's a glorious time. Oh, yeah. let, let science teach us about the scientific method. Yeah. Let, let us teach us about avoiding confusion in the human biochemical condition. Mm -hmm. uh, let science give us rationality and enlightenment yeah. uh, and a better life, a better thought process and, and better That's, teeth. Absolutely. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Jay. It's been wonderful as always. Pleasure always. Aloha. Hi.